Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to connect different uh, simulators uh, and rhythm generator boxes uh, to your monitor and how to run simulated rhythms. So this is some tips for the instructors when you're coming in to perform a skill station. But first of all, we're going to start with this uh, Lairdol uh, Mega Code Kit, and I'm going to show you how to connect it so it's able to simulate all the rhythms. Uh, and other things you need for your scenario. So first of all, you need your SIM pad. It doesn't matter what number uh, is written on it, as long as you got the SIM pad. Uh, and you need uh, the connection box, right? This is just a battery that uh, connects to it. This is a link box. You need two of these. You also need it to be connected to the wall outlet if your battery is low. But once it charges up, you could essentially unpair it and it will function on the battery. Uh, every single mannequin uh, that's capable to work with this device will have a cable coming out of it. And what you want to do is you want to basically connect them like so. Be careful not to damage the pins. Once it's connected, I always want to make sure that I tighten this up, these screws. The reason why is that uh, during the scenario, uh, a student may knock this over, it will unpair, and then you have to go through the entire process of, again, uh, pairing this together. So I just verify that all my uh, connections are good. The next thing you want to do is first Turn on the link box. Do not turn on your SIMPAD. Turn on the link box. And you will see your light come in. Right? Uh, if, if it did not have power, then turn on. Make sure it's connected to a wall outlet. And we're going to wait until um, both of these are green initially. Uh, and you will hear a mannequin cough. When it coughs, right, we know it's, we know it's connected. Uh, another important thing that you want to be cognizant here, right? Uh, when you're connecting all these devices, make sure it's in a place that the students cannot step, knock it over, right, uh, and damage this box. Uh, this is not very cheap, so we want to make sure it's preserved. You could strap it on the mannequin leg. We have a, a device for that, uh, but you don't want to leave it in a place where uh, someone can step on it. So uh, as it's uh, coming on, right, once this is the first thing to part on, the next thing you want to part on is your SIM pad. The SIM pad, Again, it has batteries in it. If you're too low, you will use the same cord, right, to basically connect it here, right? So you heard the mannequin cough, and you see the two lights are green. Once this is paired together, you will see on this uh, Wi-Fi, this is going to be blue, right? So I turn on my SIM pad. In the meantime, what you can do is you could connect your monitor, right, uh, to a wall outlet, right, turn this on connect all, all your leads. Uh, very simple way I teach the students is salt, pepper, ketchup, relish, right? And look at the diagram uh, on your um, cardiac electrodes. Make sure they click. And you want to hear this audible click. If it doesn't click, uh, they, the students will not be able to perform electrical therapy and they will say connect pads and they'll be very confused. So first of all, I always have them practice doing that, right? So connect all your limb leads and connect your pads. Make sure they click you hear that and they feel that so that they know, uh, you know, how it functions, right? So now we come to our SIM pad. The SIM pad is on. Uh, I go back and I want to make sure it's paired, right? Sometimes it doesn't auto pair. So I go on the simulator and I see it automatically paired with Mega Code Kid. If it hasn't, it would be on the bottom. All you do is basically select that it is Mega Code Kid, right? Once it connects to it, you'll see this blue, right, uh, light, right? So here green. Before it's double green, now we have uh, green and blue. Now we know we're paired. Go back. And uh, what I like to do is I like to go to the manual mode. So let me explain to you some of the advantages and uh, disadvantages of this. So the advantages of this is that you could manually set your heart rate. Uh, so you're not in a um, preset heart rate like on these generators. So here, if you put an SVT or AFib or VTEC, it doesn't matter what rhythm, it will give you whatever the preset heart rate is. Here, I can adjust my heart rate. So for example, once the students learn um, some pathophysiology and a, uh, ACLS, uh, sometimes you, you, what I like to do is I like to see right, their thought process. So I'll put an AFib right, at a rate of 50, for example, uh, and have patient be symptomatic, showing signs of hypotension, right, alter mental status, diaphoresis. And right, you see the atrial fibrillation at a rate of 50, right? It's going to be here. This number will fluctuate because it's irregularly regular rhythm. And um, now you can observe what the students will do if uh, they're so fixated uh, that a every AFib, they know if the patient's symptomatic, they have to cardiovert. There's a good uh, teaching tool, right, to basically 
uh, explain to them, right? Uh, this is a Brady dysrhythmia, this is not a techie dysrhythmia. Uh, so very uh, cool thing about this is that you could adjust the rate. Same thing for ventricular tachycardia. So here, if we have normal ventricular tachycardia, right, and they're practicing with a mega code, you could go ahead and decrease the rate to 120. At this rate, yes, it's ventricular tachycardia, but the etiology uh, will not be probably something from uh, cardiac origin. This could be uh, electrolyte abnormal abnormality, like hyperkalemia, right? And you can explain to the students about the distinction, right, and see uh, their thought process and the actions they're going to perform. So the benefit of utilizing this uh, mannequin and this device is that you could adjust the rate manually to whatever rate you want to to a different scenarios in addition to if you're running a scenario uh, that you have say, a respiratory emergency here you can um, pr uh, put on lung sounds right so here you could have crackles uh, ronchi pneumonia wheezing right so you could turn them on so here uh, cross crackles you could adjust the volume so if they're auscultating with the stethoscope they're able to hear that and you may hear that on this camera Right, you can adjust the respiratory rate. In addition to it, right, uh, you can this mannequin can talk. Yeah. Yeah. Can scream. Yeah. Could cough. <laughs> could moan. Yeah. Can have shortness of breath. Can have vomiting. Yeah. Right. So you could yeah. you have different uh, sounds on this mannequin, and this is excellent when you're running your. Um, scenarios and you want to perform some high fidelity simulation so you could adjust your lung sounds to wheezing ronchi uh, anything you like um, uh, to simulate the appropriate case and then when you're doing your cardiac scenarios you could adjust your rates right you could scroll up and down and you see all the rhythms and you could uh, dial in the specific rate uh, very important when you're doing uh, the station it's important to check your monitor as well so if i wanted to make sure right i'm able to deliver uh, all my therapies i would make sure all my leads are connected right i will see if i can defibrillate right so if your pads are not connected they will say connect pads here it doesn't tell me that so i'm able to charge i also want to check if i'm able to cardiovert right so synchronize cardiovert energy select can charge, see it's flagging, right? And uh, the last thing you wanna check here is if it's able to pace, right? So let's put a heart rate of 45, 30 degree heart block, right? And then we'll, we'll see, right, it changed. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our pacer, right? Let's say pacing at a rate of 70. And then we're going to increase our milliamps, right? I'm going to go really fast up uh, so that I can see that it's in fact doing what I want it to do. So, rate 70, current. So here it will tell you no capture. Once it actually detects capture, you will see capture showing up on your uh, sympath. So you see at 80, we have capture. So you see the spike, you see the appropriate QRS right morphology after it, and it will tell you that you have capture. So now I verified that my defibrillation, synchronized cardioversion, and pace, pacer is working. And now you could go ahead, uh, have your testing station or uh, learning station, uh, knowing that all your equipment is functional.